Hello, happy Halloween. Well, close enough. And since it's spooktober, I thought this would be an excellent time to go back to Hogwarts. So let's start off with the first movie in the series, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Or if you're in the United States, then it's the Sorcerer's Stone, which was changed since the publisher, Scholastic Productions, considered the word philosopher to be a bit too old fashioned for the younger generation of readers. So they changed the name to the Sorcerer's Stone since they thought it sounded a smidge more magical. The movie kicks off with Dumbledore extinguishing the streetlights with his uh, Deluminator, which I guess makes sense. And I don't imagine that if you woke up in the middle of the night that you would think to look out the window, but even if you did, your brain would be fucked with sleep. You probably just squint out of the darkness in your half-awake state and think, oh, it's dark outside, before promptly returning to your cozy bed. And judging by the name Deluminator, you might assume it only removes light, but no, it can in fact return light back to the source. It's like the Wizarding World version of a light switch clapper. Ah, here comes Hagrid flying down on a motorbike, which for some reason I always found really amusing. I guess there's just something comically delightful about watching this half-giant man cruising the night sky on a motorbike. And here's a fun tidbit. The very bike that Hagrid is riding was loaned to him by Sirius Black. Now, if you've read the books, then you know Dumbledore does have a good reason to leave Harry with the Dursleys, who are not exactly the most compassionate family. However, to anyone who never read the books, it looks like Dumbledore is uh, awful at decision-making. Now, whatever you do, don't push this button. No! We catch back up with the Dursleys and a curious 11-year-old Harry who's unaccustomed to receiving any mail. He's the one fetching the post this morning, and as he's looking through the letters, he sees the one that is addressed to him. Which leaves Harry uh, very surprised, all he's known for 11 years, of these rather unpleasant relatives of his. And he's never gotten any mail before. But before he can find out who it's from, and what it contains, and what it could mean for him, Dudley, of course, his annoying cousin snatches it up and hands it to his dad, who, you know, immediately tears it up. This leads into one of the funniest sequences. We see an owl fly towards Privet Drive and drop off a single letter before the owl lands atop this TV antenna, with two other owls already perched there. So, to counteract these dastardly owl deliveries, Mr. Dursley starts taking some drastic actions like sealing the letterbox shut. Who Darnells are delivering letters through my letterbox? The look on Harry's face here is priceless. He's like, bro, are you serious? How much forethought went into this? I mean, I'm actually wondering now how the Dursleys plan to get their regular mail. Was the plan to let it all pile up outside? In the next scene, we get a quick shot of even more owls outside the Dursley's residence. My question would be, why are these owls chilling out in Little Whinging after they have already delivered each of their letters? I mean, can they not leave until Harry has opened at least one letter? If that's the case, I'd recommend they all join a union. Then we see Miss Dursley cracking eggs open, only to find letters magically unfolding out of them. Wonder how that works. The avalanche of letters. You know what cracks me up? is that the person who's running the owl mail has sent so many letters by now, and not once have they paused to consider that there may be a problem. And, oh, I don't know, maybe send a representative from the Wizarding World to visit Privet Drive in person. But no, instead of doing that, they just think, aha, let me send even more owls, but this time I'll send them all at once. Genius. And that brings us nicely into the Dursleys moving out to the middle of nowhere and living in a stone hut. You know, as mean as Harry's legal guardians have been to him, I can't help but feel just a tad bad for the trauma Mr. Dursley has been through. I bet the man will never look at ours the same way again. So after Hagrid informs Harry that he is indeed a wizard, I'm a what? We catch up with them both inside the Leaky Cauldron, a wizard-owned pub, which I just found out has an illusion on it that makes the pub appear to muggles as a broken down old shop front. That makes a lot of sense. Also, it explains a scene later on in the movie. I enjoy this wall puzzle here to enter Diagon Alley. It's pretty neat. I like how the bricks need to be touched in a particular order and how high up are, making it very unlikely that anyone could easily gain access to Diagon Alley. And having control of the building where the entrance is situated is a bonus. Yeah, 
I'll give that a 7 for security. I love the Diagon Alley set they created so much. This is one of the most authentic sets I've ever seen in a blockbuster movie. I have no idea how much it costs to create it, but it was worth every penny. Some foreshadowing unfolds here when we briefly see the Nimbus 2000. Give it a wave. <laughs> How often do you reckon Mr. Ollivander has to use Repairo? Or, you know, grab a vacuum cleaner. First we get to see Harry and Hagrid going to his vault. Who are you? Whoops, wrong movie. Now Hagrid grabs the plot motivation otherwise known as the Philosopher's Stone. Percy goes through the mind-boggling illusion at like the worst time, right as this man is walking toward him and has Percy directly in his field of vision. How does this particular illusion even work? By the way, these Bertie Bot's Every Flavor Beans that Harry and Ron are quickly engulfing, you can purchase them from the Harry Potter shop. Oculus Reparo. Fun fact, Daniel Radcliffe went through 160 pairs of glasses throughout the eight movies. You've got dirt on your nose, by the way. Did you know? Just there. Oh my god, Hermione's first encounter with Harry and Ron, and she steamrolls right over poor Ronald. Yeah, that's what I'm calling him now. Ronald. He's not Ron. He's Ronald, Ronald Weasley. What is with this incredibly ominous music? And why is Minerva here creeping atop the stairs, peering down? Like, yes, children. Come and deeper into the castle. You don't want to go making friends with the wrong sort. Harry acquires his first childhood nemesis in Draco. But luckily for Harry, Draco appears to be like this bumbling idiot for the majority of the series. Could you imagine how terrible it would be if we had one of these in real life? But instead of sorting what class we belong to, it told us what career we would have. You will be a TikTok star. Oh my no, God! Minerva, transforming from her cat form as Ron and Harry arrive late. Oof, I forgot how rough some of these CGI scenes were. <laughs> Yes, Professor, alarm every single child who sat down for their evening meal. Isn't Voldemort supposed to be doing his utmost to stay incognito because he's like terribly weak at this moment? I can't help but picture Voldemort underneath Professor Quill's turban right now rolling his eyes. Of all the fools I could have chosen to aid me, I just had to pick this imbecile to attach myself to. Now, Harry and Ron, um, chuck stones at the troll to get its attention, I guess, whatever works. Therefore, providing Hermione a chance to make her escape under the sink. Next, Harry uses his wand in the most effective way. Well, night night, Mr. Troll. I would like to clear something up here once and for all. And that is during the Quidditch match, Snape is repeatedly chanting, let's go Slytherin. But of course, Hermione being ever so big brained, she comes to the false assumption that Snape is attempting to curse Harry's broom, which simply isn't true. What foolishness, I say. Well, that, or Harry, has just created Hogwarts' first ever dubstep band. <laughs> Wait, that's not dubstep. Never mind. <laughs> However, we know that's not true. Snape is attempting to save Harry. And uh, this is a detail I have to admit I overlooked until now when I was watching these movies back again. And that is, if we look behind Snape, we see Professor Quirrell staring rather intensely in the same direction as Snape. And we all know who's underneath Professor Quirrell's turban, don't we? Yes, that's right, Santa Claus. Tis the time for Harry's first ever Christmas, or Christmas at Hogwarts. Actually, this is too first for Harry, because he's also going to be celebrating with his friends for the first time. How oh. sweet. Inside one of these presents is the Cloak of Invisibility, which is about to come in real handy in his search for a book on the alchemist Nicolas Flamel, who's probably French. Who is it? Show yourself. Yes, I too always show myself when creeping around places I may not technically have permission to be in. The very second a creepy fellow with a lantern says, Show yourself. Okay, so thanks to Hermione's massive tome of big brain knowledge here, the gang find out what the Philosopher's Stone is and what it's capable of, which clues them into exactly why somebody would be attempting to steal it. Hello, Norbert. <laughs> Norbert. Norbert. A fine name for a dragon indeed. I don't imagine the dragons would make great pets, since they're essentially walking fire hazards. 
Oh, by gum. Sorry about that. That was me pit dragon, no, but you know how dragons can be, the scaly rascals. Yeah, of course it's Malfoy spying on them. Who else in the entirety of Hogwarts would it be? And the only reason he was spying on them was so he could report them to Professor McGonagall, of course, who has the strangest sense of fair punishment. First, she takes points away from the kids for them walking around the school grounds at night, which seems fair and just to me, and most people, I'm assuming. Then she hands out detention, and you're like, oh, okay, so Harry, Hermione, and Ron will have to stay in class after lessons. So they can write, I must not walk the school grounds after dark 100 times on the blackboard, which seems reasonable to me. But no, no, no. Instead, McGonagall sends them to the Forbidden Forest. Why would she send them there of all places? It's in the name, Forbidden Forest. Yet the professor is sending them into it. And this is the place where, oh, I don't know, senators, giant spiders, and this ring wraith all seem to hang out. Professor McGonagall here be like, nah, my first year students will be perfectly fine because she's sending them with Hagrid, who is not even a wizard, by the way. And don't get me wrong, Hagrid is a big bloke and all, but if you were being sent to a place called the Forbidden Forest, would you feel more secure with Hagrid or a wizard? I mean, even Snape would be a good choice to go with them. I was going to pick Dumbledore, but I assume he's just extremely busy with all his headmaster duties and whatever else he has going on. I love Filch, he's such a great character, played by David Bradley. Uh, very underrated actor, in my opinion. The pity they let the old punishments die. It was a time detention would find you hanging by your thumbs in the dungeons. I can genuinely picture Filch literally falling asleep to the sound of people hanging from their thumbs down in the dungeons. You know when you hear somebody say something like that, and you immediately assume, well, they're clearly exaggerating. With Filch, you get the impression he really means it. Your moans and screams are a lullaby to soothe my cold heart. On cold nights, after I ate my cold soup. There's a very cold theme going on here. But this chest looks epic. I wish we could play this IRL. Imagine if you could go to a venue that would run Wizards chess games for a fee. They could use machinery to move the pieces around. <laughs> Oof. Then again, maybe not. Could get kind of expensive to rebuild all those models, not to mention the mess. Apart from Voldemort's reveal being creepy as F, Krill just walking around all this time with this zombie fine face on the back of his dome. Harry defeats both Voldy and Quirrell by touching them with his hands. Now, I know later on, Dumbledore does explain that's because Harry has his mother's love in his skin. You think Harry could bottle that? Maybe make it into a soap, so that way more people could be protected from, uh, Voldy locks. Love contains anti-Voldemort properties. I understand the writers were mostly following Rowling's books. However, I'm just going to mention that this would have been an opportune time for literally any of the adult wizards in the school to turn up and behave in a manner that would befit a responsible guardian of children. You know, just saying. Ah, next we get the house point scene. For being Gryffindors, our heroes do not seem to exemplify good sportsmanlike behaviour. There's no jolly good show there, Slytherin. Or well done backpats. I couldn't find any information that would point towards Slytherin cheating. I did read that Slytherin had won the House Cup for several years before Potter arrived. Ooh, Snape does not seem happy in the slightest. Or perhaps he's just one of those happy on the inside kind of people. Alright, Hermione being awarded points for the use of her grey matter is good. Very positive message. Harry having nerve and courage is also a great message. Ron, I am iffy on. He played chess. I get that they needed to win that chess game to proceed. It just comes off as not the best reason to give him extra points, since he almost died during it. Ah, uh, yes, Ron. Let me as headmaster reinforce the idea that a child should be willing to sacrifice their life to get past these incredibly dumb traps that don't actually do their job by preventing dark wizards from breaking and entering. They are so bad, in fact, that even first-year students can figure out how to get past them. Now, where did I put my sherbet lemons? Well, this wraps up my review of the first Harry Potter film. At this point, I would suggest uh, watching another video but this being the first of its kind on my channel, I sadly cannot. However, I've already started on the next video, which will be the second Potter film. Until then, thanks for watching, stay safe, and see you later.